Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode. A, 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 a complete disorder of technical affairs here today. That's some welcome if you got it, but we're going to push on through. Today, for record selection number one, I don't even know what I'm talking about, the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charlton. We are doing Dune, Eros, D-U-N-E-R-O-S. Dune is the name of the band. Eros is the name of the album. It is a subgenre of Zool. Which is one of my very interesting. Yeah, that's it's a subgenre of prog, I should say. And uh they are one of the great progenitors of this music. And you're gonna enjoy it. It's a great time today. Uh you know the rules, smoke it, listen to side one, come back to us, talk to me in twenty minutes, all right? There you go. Let's go to side A. <laughs> Gee, this is my favorite album we've done so far. I agree with you. I want to hear this really loud with a bunch of people in the room. This is one of those things that got me into prog originally. I love uh, when everything is composed and it's a big band and everybody is going in and out. To give Mm. you some context, folks, this uh, this has a lot of Zappa. This has a lot of rocking out Crimson. This has Blue Oyster Cult. This has everything that we've heard up to this point is in this album, honestly. But it's, but it's the greatest of times. Uh, we're listening to Dune. This is their 1981 release, and we're on side A. Uh, out of the two tracks up at the top, uh, which is your favorite? The first one. I really like Arrakis, which is track number two. Uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like them both. I like them yeah. both, right? So, like, it's really just, they just they, they set the tone, right? So they come out just bam. Yeah, it uh, the record hits you like a ton of bricks. It's full on rock and roll. Everything is composed and everything is intentional. Um, this is their only album too. Only release, huh? Yeah, they made they made a thousand copies and they sold them at concerts. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's uh, so. What's the price? Uh, what's the asking price for this? There's one copy. One guy is selling. There's only one copy available. Wow. <laughs> Guys selling it in Japan for five hundred and something dollars. Oh, that's no problem. So. There you go. Somebody, somebody, get that and send it over to us. Um, Come on. What was uh, what was the thing that uh, what what did you like best? Because to me, again, was all the percussive uh, breaks in the music and all the you know the melody was just uh, as important in the percussion as it was in the string instruments. And that that to me was really cool. And the fact that it sounds like an army of musicians coming at you really really turned me on. You know. Doug, the guitar player, killer guitar player. Do you right, have the name so. of the uh, of the members of this band? Yeah, the guitar player is Jean Gereitz. Uh That's the guitar player Bruno Sabbath on piano, Pascal Van der Buckel on flute, Thierry Tranchant on bass, and Laurent Bertold on drums, and Alain Termoz on percussion and xylophone. So that's the sh- the shit about the like this band. That vibraphone, xylophone, super important to the sound. That that is what Flute, makes super it super important to the sound too. Yeah, that that really is what makes it. If if you folks, uh, if you find folks listening to us, I'm sure you all know about Steve Reich and, and that lot of people. But it reminded me a lot of uh, 18, and a lot of the pieces of music from Steve Reich where there are uh, oh, Ruth Underwood driven. Yeah, Ruth Underwood. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is all the Sapa that we were talking about earlier. Um, so this is a French band. Yes, and so this goes on my list of what I told everybody before. My top 10 French prog bands are tougher than your top 10, fill in the blank, from whatever country you think the best prog comes from. The Shots Fire Challenge of Season 1, we still have anybody to take up. Uh, whoever comes up with it, uh, you know. Come on. Just, just try them. Just, just bring it on. Uh, can we talk about the uh, the the record cover? Um, it reminds me of uh, Seraphim, or uh, you know, it's creepy. It's, it's creepy. It's cre- the music has a little bit of creep to it too. That's why I, lo- I, I love it. The music is man. super it's creepy because it has dark. a lot of. Uh, if we, if I needed How to, how dark like, is your prog? Yeah, if I needed to like point it somewhere, this is like uh, this is Tim Burton territory. This is uh, sure. Danny Elfman territory. And uh, it is 1981. The cover is a white mask uh, of a clown with, uh, you know, for the eye holes, it's just black and black lips. It's a very serial killer. And it's also very simple. Uh, You know, the word arrows in caps at the bottom and doom with the umlaut at the top. 
very nondescript. It does fit the music very well because the music couldn't be more expressive if it tried legitimately. Um, this before, record, this yeah. record should be flipped over, though. Yeah. Before we go to the side two, though, I want to talk about. Um, I said this is uh, Zool, right? Oh yeah, the the, the subgenre. Can, yeah, the subgenre I don't even know about Zool. this. Yeah. So it it really comes from uh, magma. Okay. So bands that basically like really threw down with magma, also because of like the 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 sung language. Right. Well, you're gonna so, like, you're like, gonna have to go deeper into that. Oh, so folks, so uh, magma, which we will talk about. We will talk about magma. One of the best bands of all time. Agreed. Uh, I, we're might as well say it right now. They're also on the top ten French bands of all yeah. time list. So they created their own language. They sing in called Cobayan. Yeah, the the drummer and, and founder uh, of the band Christian Vander came up with his own written language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zool Zool means celestial. So like celestial music. There you go. And um, but there's lots of cool bands that come from it. Uh, usually with people that like have played uh, in Magma, like the band We Doors is really awesome. Um, there's actually and they Japanese... all and they all fall in that place of celestial music. Zool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eschaton's incredible. Um, there's actually Japanese bands that are really into them. Uh, nice. And and singing Kobayan, the made up language. The Japanese guys singing the Kobayan language. They're called Ruins, incredible band. So there's there's lots of them actually. Zol Caravan, I'm thinking about it now. Zao. There's so many good Zool bands. Um, one of the one of the strongest, along with what we talked about the other day about uh, when we talked about um, the Art Bears. Yeah, the uh, RIO Rock and Opposition. Well, this this is one of those uh, this is one of those bands Sub-genre. that uh, that wants to uh, take you someplace else. I am I'm a big fan of bands that come up with their own uh, language because uh, it, it it takes you on a different journey, right? Once words are out of the equation, um, the music becomes entrancing, ritualistic, um, and a louder setting would become hypnotic and it would make perfect sense for this to be called celestial music. There's an instrument uh, with that name that is uh, representative of the sky and earth. Uh, so yeah, this, this is all super groovy stuff in a very good way. This has been hokey or cheesy. I, you know, if, if you like rock and roll and you like the music that we've been talking up to this point, this record will not disappoint you. Can we flip nope. this over? Yeah. Yeah. We also shouldn't have to, uh, uh, pull your arm here to convince you to uh man up here and smoke smoke one more time here for side two listen to my partner i mean he's just speaking the truth here you want you want to give him a little pep talk here because come on put the phone down you know we you know every, every every time you want to look at those hoes on instagram i understand everyone loves it even the hoes love looking at their hoes on instagram it's it's okay that's how they make their money yeah nothing but wrong for with now this. but just, just for this come on for 20 minutes put it down listen Sorry. to this album I want, and then and then think about what. Where does your mind go when you hear this music? Right, right. Because yeah. like that that that's what happens is when you listen to regular music. I'm not going to say like we could we could go all the way down to like pop music, country music. It basically can be back can be very background noise in your life. It, it's very un, un, unoffensive, right? It doesn't yeah. take take much space in your head. You can just exist, and you don't have to think about it. So this music is the opposite of that. Right, yeah. it, it forces it upon yourself. So surrender, and come back to us, please, in twenty minutes. Listen to the man. We'll see you uh, in a second. All right. This record does not let down. We're listening to nope. Dune. No, nope. best album we've listened to yet. G. Arrows, nineteen eighty one, a French band sitting in the subgenre of Zool, which we just learned from the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah yes, Chong. Yes, very, very smart decision to uh, to bring this record, and uh, we've grown into progression, right? We went almost uh, to no form, into pop form to a certain extent, but it's been very organic. It's been very authentic, original, and. Um, I can't stress how cool the breaks are in this record in terms of what everybody's doing together. 
all the musical breaks uh, work so well. This band, in my mind, and when I'm listening to it, I'm really playing it loudly in noise canceling headphones. Uh, it just it it became a rock and roll big band, you know. And Very, uh, yeah, and in in the first, especially the first cut of the B side, uh, Betonio. Um, there is something really cool about where this song starts and how it ends and transitions into the last cut of the record. It's also the shortest song of the album and to me is the one that had the most twists and turns. Well, it's, it's incredible. There's no, no weak points in this album. Short no album, 36 minutes. Yeah. And man, it's just, it's just bulletproof. Yeah. Yeah. Very, um, in, so we were talking about how this these bands come off of uh, Magma and Christian Vander and the affinity of creating a new language and that sort of stuff. Um, I, I feel like this band has a lot to uh, prove every time they play, not in terms of like for the listener, but in terms of them. It, it sounds like there's a really healthy competition happening inside the studio. Oh, uh, so, so what's interesting is, and I love Magma, right? They're one of the best bands. I've seen them live a couple twice and incredible again one of the best bands ever but i think that this this album it, you could say is like the best zool album right like it it's 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 it, it's <laughs> it reminds me of if if you guys know any of the hard rock like you think about like van halen 1984 that yeah. album like and then roth leaves and then he puts eat and smile and like yep. eat and smile is like the best van halen album that it really wasn't the Van Halen now. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like this, this is like the version of this in Zool. Right? D- yeah, this record, like, this record. Yeah, this record. This is the best no magma album of all time, right? Like, and 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 it's not a rip off. Nope, but it's definitely a tribute, right? Like, like if if you listen to a lot of magma, you'll hear it. You'll you'll hear. Especially I don't like think it, I don't think it could have happened without magma. Obviously, well, no, not even close. So, they're, they're, they're trying, right? Like. Yeah, but but it's very much their own thing. I think what Dune set out to do was create this like body of work that resonates at a high level, and uh, they did it in the shortest amount of tracks. It's only four tracks. This record, you know, in totality, it's only four tracks. This is the sh- Betonio is seven minutes long, and, and the closing one it's ten minutes long. Arrows, but total time of thirty six minutes. There's not a wasted space in this record. No, what's interesting to me also is like the album. Um, being released in '81, like that's the end, and that's like sort of like the end of Magma too. Like, not quite. Like, I'm like, come on, don't don't get mad at internet. I'm not saying that, but if you really know what I'm, if you really know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying. That Magma was nearing its end of its relevancy and its run. Right, it changes right? and changes after that, and popularity wise too. Like they were popular in France and and drew good crowds, but but this was like probably their peak was probably '76. You know, yeah. like a good run from early seventies to mid seventies drawing big crowds. So my thoughts are like, these kids were like probably in high school going to those magma concerts, you know, in 76 and getting their head completely blown off their shoulders and going home and practicing and like creating this music. It's incredible. It's incredible. This is, this is not like fucking just going, seeing a punk band and coming out with your buddies and knowing three chords. Like this is, no, 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 no. This is, this is, this is complex. This is aggressive. Um, this has, you know, this has much Zappa as it has fusion jazz, as it has Gamelon music. Um, you know, just the idea of a standard group that only presents their music live. And this is the record that there is. There's only a thousand of them. And it includes flutes and vibraphones and synthesizers. Uh, nothing sounds like this. And uh, and it's such a great... Uh, if, if this is the end, like you're talking about, like the end cap of that era, what a great end cap to that era. Because, yeah, you're probably right. These are just people that were super hungry to create something that sounded like their heroes. It, it sounds like a love letter to Magma for sure. Uh, without taking away the fact that it's a straight up like rock and roll band, just rocking the hell out of your face from the top to the bottom, you know, like you, this is this is one of those records that you pass on, and you tell people to listen to, and that's what we do here at Smoke If We Got Them. So this is this is it. So before we leave, I told people our last episode that uh, we'd do a little review of like our best songs so far of the 
This is our twelfth episode today, actually. Yeah, but before before you bury the lead here, um, if you want to go check out that playlist, um, which is already set up, it's got all the best stuff. It's ready to go. You got to go over to the Anchor.fm page, subscribe to the page, and you'll get a direct link over to YouTube, and you'll get them all first try. There's no money. Just subscribe to the channel and send us over because, uh, you know, it'll help us in the algorithm. We'll show up in more places, and we got to teach these folks uh, a lesson. So uh, join us over there. Check those out, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Smoke'em if you got them. <laughs>